Oh, thanks for taking my call, Kojo. And I don't know exactly how to word this, but I'm curious about your bio and and how you sort of ended up in Maryland. It seems to me in politics, even in my little local town, people are into politics to be in politics, and they're professional politicians. And I hear you saying we and us and Maryland and things like that, but when I look at your bio, you've kind of worked all over the place in a lot of political ways. What, what makes you different than someone who's just here to be a politician and not here to care about somebody like me who has lived in Maryland, grew up in Maryland, went to the University of Maryland, and cares deeply about this state well, and our future? Jean, allow me to add to that for Delegate Mazir, a part of an email we got from Gwen in Chevrolet. But when I looked at your bio, it struck me as very thin for someone aspiring to be governor. You no doubt represents your constituents in Tacoma Park very well, but I saw nothing that makes you a standout from other Washington area local officials. From what I see in terms of your experience, education, and training, I want a woman to be governor of Maryland, but I would not vote for you because I do not think you are qualified compared to others in the race. Have I overlooked something about you? Well, those Jean and Gwen kind of, uh, you meshing those together, I will try to answer them each separately. Um, For Gwen, um, I'm very proud of the record I have uh, put together in the last seven years in the General Assembly and for uh, a couple years before that in in my city council service. Tacoma Park. In Tacoma Park, yes. I have I have a lot of accomplishments that I'm very proud of that I think give you a roadmap of how I would govern in this state. Um, whether it is expanding health care coverage for more children. When I came into office, there were 100,000 children who were eligible but not covered in health insurance. And it was because we, we had a, a message of, well, we have to settle. There are always going to be some children who are uninsured in this state. And that's not so. With a very simple solution of putting a checkbox on Maryland's tax forms, we now have families report whether or not their children have health insurance. And that gives us information that is key to knowing how much money does a family Family earn and are the children uninsured and so we're doing rapid outreach and enrollment off of our tax forms to get these children covered as a result 50,000 of those children have health insurance over the last two years and the federal government has given us 80 million dollars in perform- performance bonus grants to but reward us for our Jean, innovation but what and both Jean and Gwen seem to be implying if not saying outright is that they'd like to know a little bit more about your history in Maryland how long have you been there what have you done there besides being a political operative well, I have lived in 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 Maryland. I didn't I didn't grow up here, um, and thankfully, Maryland is a is a state that is kind to people who have um, backgrounds from other places. I grew up in rural Illinois. I am a fifth generation farming family. My father was a welder at a factory, and spent 32 years as a United Auto worker um, in that factory. And I am a Marylander by choice, though. I came here and fell in love with this state, and um, have a home in Montgomery County. In Tacoma Park, where I have represented the uh, the Tacoma Park and Silver Spring area in the General Assembly for the last seven years, and I also own a farm over on Maryland's eastern shore, a 34-acre organic herb farm, and spend a lot of time um, over there on the eastern shore. I love this state. I have been elected by its statewide members as a Democratic National Committee woman since 2005. I ran Senator John Kerry's presidential campaign for the state, and as I as I've worked in every corner of the state on fracking and making sure out in Western Maryland that unregulated fracking doesn't come into our state and harm our environment and our um, public health and the local economy out there without us doing strict safety studies first. Okay, only because- You would be the first woman, you would be the first LGBT person to be governor. Mm-hmm. Um, you're running on issues. You'd also be the those. first from Montgomery County. And first from Montgomery County. And those are all um, ancillary parts of your campaign. But uh, Doug Gansler is, is preparing to run, says he'll make a decision or announcement this fall. Um, why would why would you be a better candidate, Democratic candidate for governor than Doug Gansler? If I can jump ahead to the race as if you were already in it. Well, I think this goes back to maybe what Jean was wanting to have a follow-up question on, which she was like, you know, what makes you not just like every other typical politician? And Jean, it's because I'm willing to jump in against all the odds because of what I believe in and that I'm willing to wake up every day to fight to work for you. And without regard to the special interests in Annapolis and the power structure that exists, I have a record of standing up and fighting for what I believe in and working hard every day Better to than address Doug the Gandler. problems. 
better than, you're getting I, I'm to not, talk to I'm not here I'm not here I'm not running a campaign against anyone I'm here um, and if I get in this race it will be about why I would be a better governor 